meal prep for you all. After sharing the first one, I got so many requests for more, so I am here delivering. This week we're keeping it super simple, but you know that never means anything is ever going to be lacking in taste. All three dishes that I'm about to share are stunning. They are delicious. Let me know in the comments if you want me to continue shooting this style of video. Maybe it will just kind of be a regular thing. I'd love to hear from you. I really hope these meal ideas are just adding value to your life that you realize, you know, with a little bit of prep, a little bit of organization, you can really plan out your week and you can eat delicious food and feel your absolute best. Let's jump right into this meal prep. Let's start with breakfast, let's go. So starting off with our breakfast prep, we are going to whip up these mini goat cheese and spinach frittatas. They are so simple to put together and really convenient to have on hand, especially for those busy mornings. So let's start off by chopping up all of our ingredients for the mini frittatas, uh, beginning by finely slicing, dicing um, a red onion, and then chopping up some cherry tomatoes. I love to add cherry tomatoes. We're also gonna finely chop up some spinach too, which we are actually going to cook down. I just prefer cooking my spinach down and then adding it in. Um, so yeah, grab a pan, and heat a little bit of olive oil, place in the chopped red onions, season with a little bit of salt and pepper, and then place in your spinach and just mix everything, cooking everything down. I know that some people just like to throw the raw spinach into the frittata mixture and just whack it in the oven. I don't know, this step just adds an extra something for me. I just prefer to cook my spinach down beforehand. That is just preference. If you are short for time and you just don't wanna do this step, you know, just whack it your way. So grabbing a large bowl, we are going to crack all of our eggs into the bowl. I know I'm gonna get asked for egg alternatives because I always do whenever I share egg recipes. I'm probably not the best person to ask. So if anyone is like strictly vegan, plant-based or just can't eat eggs, please share your favorite egg alternatives in the comments so other people can learn. So give your eggs a really good whisk and season with some salt. You can also throw some pepper in there if you want to. Then place in some finely chopped parsley. I also added in a swell of extra virgin olive oil just to keep everything moist. And um, yeah, so simple. Once the mixture has cooled down, we're gonna put these frittatas together. So I'm gonna have a little cooking break. I'm about to make my cup of tea. I'm gonna sit down and I'm going to play my favorite game at the moment, which is called June's Journey, who are also the sponsors of today's video. I'm such a solve a mystery kind of woman. So this is the perfect game for me. June's Journey is an adventurous hidden object mystery game. You will step into the role as amateur detective June Parker set in the glamorous 1920s where you will be on a quest to solve a scandalous family secret. Within the hidden object scenes there are five chapters and a final adventure scene in which you unlock the deeper secrets of the story. June's journey has me on the edge of my seat so the quicker you spot and select the objects, some of them are so difficult to find, the higher your score will be. I sometimes need a little downtime especially on shoot days when I'm filming for the whole day like in between recipes I just just like to give myself a moment, sit down with my little tea and just play a few levels of June's Journey. Uh -oh, okay, I need a clue. June's Journey is a completely free to download mobile game which has the smoothest, most vibrant, uniquely crafted scenes. It's super easy to download June's Journey. You can either click the link in my description or from the QR code that you can see on screen, you can just simply scan it and download it. So grabbing my muffin cupcake tin, I lined it with some cupcake cases and I placed in that cooled down spinach mixture. I then placed in some cherry tomatoes, followed on by some goat cheese. I then followed on by pouring in all of that egg mixture. I think the easiest way to do it is definitely using a ladle, that's just a tip. I finished the mini frittatas off with some chives because I just had some in the fridge, so I thought that would be a nice addition. So I placed the tray into a 180 degree Celsius, which is about 350 degree Fahrenheit preheated oven. I left them in there for about 20 minutes until they had fully set, they were fully cooked through. So once cooked, I removed these gorgeous tasting, gorgeous looking mini goat cheese and spinach frittatas. I like to use the cupcake cases just because it just prevents anything from sticking, but I did put a little bit of olive oil in the mixture, which will also help. So yes, yeah, super simple, very, very straightforward. So these are fantastic for prep, great when you're on the go, when you are short for time. If you're a savory breakfast person like myself, then these are a great option just to prep ahead, add whatever vegetables you enjoy. This is actually a great recipe to use any leftover odds and ends that you have in your fridge. These are definitely something that you can just put your own stamp on and work them anyway. Throw in whatever cheese you like if you wanna throw in some extra protein, if smoked salmon, your thing if ham's your thing you can definitely work these to suit you not only brilliant for breakfast these also make a great snack as well 
a word of warning that this lunch is beyond words. This is probably my favorite part of the whole meal prep. So this is my chickpea and kale salad with a hemp tahini ranch. We're gonna whip up this vibrant green dressing, which is just going to create the most beautiful chickpea and kale salad. And we're gonna pair it with this honey miso salmon. So easy to put together. And the combination of both dishes within this lunch just work and pair so beautifully. So let's begin by prepping this honey miso salmon, which is just a few steps. We're just gonna whip up a marinade, throw it over the salmon, whack the salmon in the oven and it is done. So let's grab a bowl. We're gonna throw some olive oil in the bowl along with some lemon zest. We're then gonna throw in some miso. I'm gonna write on the screen the exact brand of miso that I love to use. We're gonna place in some honey along with some Dijon mustard, some finely chopped or some grated garlic and we are simply just gonna mix everything well. So placing our salmon on a lined baking sheet, we're gonna season well with some salt and some black pepper and some garlic powder before placing on all of that honey and miso marinade and just making sure all of the salmon pieces are covered well. I just like to use this little brush that I have just to make sure I don't miss any spots, any areas of the salmon, I want everything covered. So place your salmon in a preheated oven of about 180 degrees. You can leave it in there for 25 to 30 minutes. I always make a point to say that depending on the type of salmon that you're using, the size of the salmon that you're using, cook time is going to vary. So you be the judge of that. So whilst our honey miso salmon is cooking away in the oven, we can move on and prepare our chickpea and kale salad with that hemp tahini ranch dressing. So there are a few options for the kale. I'm personally just not someone who enjoys raw cow like I don't mind it every now and then but if I have an option to cook it I will but I grabbed my steaming tray and I put the cow to steam if you want to blanch it you can if you want to keep it raw because you enjoy raw cow that also is completely fine so yeah I just steamed my cow for a couple of minutes I wanted it to kind of reach that vibrant feel have that vibrant look to so it so for our hemp tahini ranch dressing we're going to grab a blender and into that blender we are going to place in some hemp seeds some tahini lots of fresh parsley I also threw some fresh dill. I just always have lots of fresh herbs on hand. So I just whack anything in, everything in, whatever I feel like. Squeezed in some lemon juice, threw in a little bit of cayenne. Of course, added in some salt, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, just one little clove of garlic, um, some mustard. And I also placed in some water, just a touch of water, just to thin everything out so everything would blitz well in my food processor. I like this dressing to be smooth. So I just left my blender on until everything was whizzed up properly. Look at this vibrant green, life-giving hemp tahini ranch dressing that we have just put together. This one, mm, it is so incredible. So I rinsed off my shop-bought chickpeas and I placed them into a large mixing bowl along with that steamed kale. And really, really simple. I just poured over that hemp tahini ranch dressing and just mixed everything up. I love using kale for meal prep because it's that green that just doesn't get soggy. It holds flavor. And actually, I think it gets more delicious over time. All that is left to do is to remove the salmon from the oven. I finally chopped up some fresh parsley and just threw that over. And yeah, we just put this meal prep together. So grab your Tupperware if you're doing this meal prep, it's like individual meals, and place in that chickpea and kale salad with the hemp tahini ranch dressing, um, along with that honey miso salmon. Simple, effective, and absolutely delicious. So this is my lentil and beef chili. This is my ideal type of one pot meal just to have on hand. We're gonna pack it full of fresh vegetables. We're gonna add lots of herbs and spices, flavor it up, it's going to be incredible. I'm serving mine with some quinoa. You can use rice, you can use any grain of choice. And I'm also gonna be serving it with some tender stem too. So for the chili, I have my beef mint and I also have some store bought Pre-cooked lentils, no shame. So we're gonna start off by finely dicing, chopping up our onions, followed on by chopping up lots and lots of garlic. So I usually just throw whatever vegetables I have on hand into my chili. I usually have a couple of carrots on hand. So but yeah, I just finely diced my carrots. I chopped up um, some red pepper and I also had a green pepper. So chop some of that up. If you have celery or mushrooms, you can throw those into this dish too. So let's heat a pan on a low to medium heat, swirl in a little bit of olive oil and place in your onions and garlic. So just soften the onions and garlic, just cooking down very gently, season with some salt and pepper, and then go ahead and throw your mince in. Again, season 
seasoning with some salt, some pepper. So I threw in some cayenne, some cumin powder and some oregano and just continued to mix everything. I also splashed a little bit of tamari in. You can splash a little bit of regular soy sauce if you want to. And I had this like smoky tomato paste on hand. So I thought that would be quite a nice addition. If you don't have a smoky tomato paste, no worries at all. You can just throw a regular tomato paste. And if you want to kind of add like that smoky flavor, you can throw a bit of smoked paprika in. I followed on by placing in my tin tomatoes. So I used some whole plum tomatoes and I just crushed everything down. I swelled in a little bit of balsamic. Give it a little bit more black pepper. I can just tell by eye when it needs some more salt or pepper. And then threw in the lentils along with all of those chopped vegetables. So the carrots and the peppers. And then I threw in my stock which I use some beef stock. You can use any stock broth of choice. So I threw a bay leaf in there before mixing everything well. So yeah, I would advise just to reduce the heat and cook it for at least like 40 to 45 minutes. If you can go longer, then that will be perfect. But you want everything to be reduced. You want that sauce to be thickened up and you want that chili to be obviously tasting incredible. So I like to soak my quinoa for at least one hour before cooking it. I feel like it makes a huge difference. So I took my soaked quinoa, gave it a good wash and rinse and I placed it into a pot. Today I decided to cook my quinoa in half coconut milk, half water. Sometimes I like to do this. I placed in some salt, some black pepper, a mixed herb blend that I had and some turmeric, mostly for the coloring. I brought everything to a very gentle boil, reduced the heat to low, like very, very low and just let that quinoa cook. If you soaked your quinoa beforehand, it's gonna cook a lot quicker. So I'd say like within probably like 10 minutes, it will be cooked. If you didn't soak your quinoa, it might take a little bit longer, but just yeah, keep an eye on it and be the judge of when your quinoa's cooked. You want the grains to be fully translucent. That's when you know your quinoa's cooked properly. So I also wanted to prepare some tender stem for this meal prep, which is the easiest thing to do, especially if you are roasting it. So I just placed my tender stem on a flat lined baking sheet. I placed over some salt. I also gave it a little bit of farikaki, which is one of my favorite sesame seed condiments. I love it. Threw over some garlic powder, a little drizzle of olive oil, just making sure everything was covered. And then I just placed it in an oven for around 15 minutes or so until the tender stem was cooked. I love a little tender stem side. So yeah, let's serve up this dinner prep by placing it in that coconut quinoa along with that lentil and beef chili, topping with that tender stem. Meal prepping is going to look different for everybody. Some of you might feel like, oh, actually preparing a lunch, that would actually save me a lot of time, would save me money, would save me thinking about what I'm gonna eat. So that might be convenient for you. Or it could even be that you just prep, wash and store your produce beforehand. And that just makes cooking during the week a lot easier. Like I said, take what you want from this video. I hope, hope, and pray that it has sparked so many ideas that you feel that creative energy just to step into your kitchen just to prepare something for yourself prepare something nourishing from scratch if that is possible thanks once again to june's journey for sponsoring today's video remember to click the link in my description or scan the qr code that you can see on screen to download the game let me know in the comments if these meal prep videos are of value to you if you want me to continue shooting and sharing them with you i will see you all in my next video very very soon everybody take care see you bye